In this segment, we're going to concentrate on setting the alarms, uh, the internal relays of the SensePoint XCD. Uh, the instrument actually has three different alarms, uh, three relays that can be mapped. Uh, and in this segment, we're going to concentrate on setting the values, setting the personality of those relays, uh, and even some of the conditions, uh, like on or off delays. First step, uh, as always, pressing and holding the magnet until you get the outer circle uh, indicated. That's going to enter us into uh, this uh, primary menu. In the case of an engaged password, which we discussed in a separate segment, uh, the first step would be actually a request to enter the correct passcode in order to get to this menu. Uh, we're going to scroll across through the various options uh, that we've gone through these in, in other segments. What I'm trying to move to is the segment that is uh, focused on the uh, relay functions and, and uh, alarm values. So the first step is setting the alarm. I'm going to enter that, uh, that menu. And here it's going to show the current default setting. Uh, I can use these arrows to move up or down uh, to change this value. In this case, I've got an LEL sensor, 0 to 100% range. Um, if it was a CO sensor or an oxygen sensor, you have this ability to select the value at which you want that relay to, to go off, that particular alarm relay. I'm going to leave these uh, that alarm level 1 at 10. Um, the next question that's asked is, do you want a rising or falling alarm? Uh, oxygen is a typical case where somebody looks for a falling alarm in a depletion scenario. Uh, 20.9 is typical ambient. You want the alarm level or the contact uh, to engage if the value drops below a, a certain threshold. In the case of LEL, typically we're looking for a relay to engage on the rise. So we're going from typical zero up above 10%. This relay would, uh, would then engage. Uh, second level, now what's, uh, in this case it's defaulted to 20. Same process. I can move this up or down. You can see the marking across the, uh, the graded scale on the left side showing you where you are in terms of full-scale range. Um, we're going to leave that where it is. So same question asked about do I want a rising or falling relay. So I've set the values in that first section. I've set the concentrations that I want these relays to go off at and whether we want a, a rising or falling alarm. My next is going to be setting the relay functions. So relay 1 uh, is associated right now with alarm level 1. We're mapping certain conditions to the th one of the three relays that are engaged in the back. In each one of these options, what we have is the opportunity to make each relay associated with either alarm 1, alarm 2, inhibit, uh, which would be an indication of maintenance activity. Uh, in this case, for instance, we're in a menu, uh, we're driving a menu, doing maintenance functions. We could make a relay 1, in this case, uh, engage because we're in the menu or we're doing a calibration. People sometimes will pull that as a, a contact closure into a control system so that you know that you're in maintenance. Um, or we can map it as a fault. So there's something wrong with the sensor. The sensor has failed, something's missing, somebody drove over it, whatever the case, it's not doing its intended job, and so we can give you a, a contact closure, or a relay that tells you that, that that's the case. In this case, we're going to leave this associated with alarm one. Um, De-energized, it's whether or not the, the uh, coil is actually moved based on uh, energy or not. So uh, in this case, a de-energized relay with no power going to the coil, it's in a particular state. When the relay is engaged, you power the coil, you change the state, uh, and you've got the option of making a selection of either an energized or de-energized relay. Um, the other options uh, are typically uh, across for relay two. Uh, and in the case of a fault relay, uh, classically you'll see a fault relay uh, shows up as a uh, energized relay. So relay three in this case is associated with a fault. In this case, uh, I'm going to leave it as an energized relay. The idea here is that the power on the device is holding that coil in its position. So if we lost power uh, or something took place, that, ener that relay is going to, going to change state. It's going to go to a different state on, on a power loss or any, any uh, type of fault condition. So it gives you a good indication or good fail safe. Um, the last step that we're going to put on is, is the uh, operations of the relay. Um, this is a, a unique option, and it's, uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility. It's the idea of an on and off delay. So uh, with limits, because these are safety systems and you need to make sure you're thinking through uh, the hazards of your particular application, if there's a circumstance where you don't want the relay to go on unless the condition is persistent for X number of uh, period of time. So let's say that we uh, want to look at this and say we want a 10-second delay. Um, an application could be uh, for oxygen monitoring, nitrogen, for instance. 
we've, we've got some customers where normal operation is opening up a nitrogen freezer. During that, uh, they get a slight puff. Uh, their safety group is deemed not a specific uh, a, a routine hazard uh, for that short interval. So what they, what they want is the ability to not force an alarm, not cause a, uh, you know, a major alarm condition for a short duration puff. But if they've got something that happens and it persists for 10 seconds or 20 seconds, they want at that point to say, yep, at this alarm level for this period of time, uh, I now consider that to be a hazard. And so we can give you that function, that kind of a, a delay function on the on. And then uh, the other option is on the off side. So in some cases, people will take the contact closures and use that to drive a fan, for instance, to exhaust the space. Well, uh, in those cases, they say, perhaps I want to have the fan run for an extra uh, 10 minutes. Uh, or some period of time. Um, you can scroll this through and now you've got this ability to have the relay stay engaged um, even though the alarm condition has been, uh, has been uh, relieved, but you still run that, that relay for some period of time. And again, the classic application would be somebody running a fan uh, to continue to exhaust the space. Um, last step is a decision of whether or not you have a latched alarm or not. In a latching case, a person would have to come up to the device and, and manually indicate that uh, somebody is there and is taking control of the situation and releasing the relay uh, physically, manually, uh, through the uh, front display. In a non latch setting, the relay releases itself after the condition has been cleared. Uh, and that now has set the uh, full relay uh, parameters. We've set the alarm level, the function of rising or falling. Uh, we've associated the relay with what alarm condition we wanted to have it mapped to. Uh, we've set the delay functions and, and really created a very powerful, uh, powerful output that can be optimized to a particular hazard condition. Uh, same as before, if I press and hold until the circle releases, I can actually enter the abort menu. I arrow over, and now I can leave that whole routine and go back to active reading with my alarm level set as programmed.